Hi guys, today I'm going to take you to a mountainous region in southern China, which has many mysterious man-made cave dwellings. These caves were excavated on the cliffs into the bedrock. Even though there are no historical records on the cave's origin, the local chronicle states that people built and utilized enforced strongholds or villages in mountains as retreats and defense systems in the 1200s. So were these caves excavated 800 years ago, or do they have a longer, more intriguing history? The distinct markings inside these caves curiously resemble the tool marks we see at many ancient megalithic sites around the world, such as in the Longyo Caves in China, the Baza Caves in Turkey, and the Gabel el Sosila Quarry in Egypt. Some say these markings came from hand tools like chisels or pickaxes, explaining why we see similar markings showing up at different ancient megalithic sites. Is that so? In this video, I'll compare the markings inside the ancient caves with the ones from chisels, jackhammers, and hard rock excavating machinery. Let's see which markings are the closest in resembling the ancient ones. First, let's look at these cliffside stone caves located in Neijiang, the central region of the Sichuan Basin, southwest China. Round purple sandstone hills make up 90% of the city's territory. One of the counties in Neijiang, Weiyuan, used to be called the Iron Mountain in ancient times. Records as early as 200 BC reveal prominent iron smelting and producing work in this area. Besides iron, this location is known for its rock salt production in Chinese dynastic times. The abundant mineral resources and convenient river transportation routes made this region a battleground among political powers. For thousands of years, local people sought refuge by building villages on high mountains and cliffs to avoid war and protect their families. Local County Chronicle says that before 300 AD, during the Three Kingdoms period, the legendary Chinese military strategist Zhuge Liang once smelted iron here to manufacture weaponry. He also sent troops to stronghold villages to fight the locals, the so-called barbarians. So it's possible these ancient caves can be traced back to over 1700 years ago. A thousand years after, around 1270, Sichuan Basin suffered from the Mongolian occupation. It's documented that people began to utilize and build more reinforced villages in mountains to defend against the Mongols. Multiple fort-like villages were established on hilltops with gates and houses. Most Chinese suspect that the secret cave dwellings were excavated during this period as well. It's hard to tell the age of these stone caves, Though judging by the writings and calligraphies left inside the caves, we can be sure that the caves existed long before our modern time. These caves are all excavated on the cliff sides in mid-hill, about 100 to 200 meters above ground. They are well camouflaged amongst countless hills in this region. From afar, it's very difficult to find out the cave locations, which make them exceptionally effective hiding spots. To get to a cave, one needs to first climb up the right hill and then find a single narrow path, which leads to the bottom of the cave. These caves often have several stories with living quarters on higher floors. The interior of such caves can be quite spacious with multiple rooms grand halls, corridors, stairs, and storage areas. These caves usually have one or more water cisterns outside and appear to be designed for human habitation. One of the biggest caves, Zian, has over 10 chambers spanning three stories. The bottom level is about 3 meters or 10 feet tall and 200 square meters, which is about 2,200 square feet. Parts of the cave facade are covered with stone blocks. Maybe the blocks didn't belong to the initial design, but were constructed later after the original cave walls collapsed. Many chambers have small niches that line up, looking like beam holes. The main floor is the third floor. 
which is over 800 square meters or 8,600 square feet. There are many interesting features, such as the large sunken areas, a big tub looking thing, and a higher up complex of window sills. One room has curved ceilings. This floor is 21 meters or 69 feet long and 6 meters or 20 feet deep with high ceilings of 5 to 7 meters, which is 15 to 23 feet. That's the size of a cave, and the excavation work wouldn't be easy. Well-defined marks can be seen everywhere inside these cave dwellings, even on the way climbing up to the caves and at the bottom of the cliff. Again, these marks remind me of the ones on other ancient sites in Asia, Middle East, Europe, and Africa. These markings are large in size and pretty uniform. In most areas, these distinct markings show striations that are almost perfectly parallel. I know you might be thinking that these caves are in an iron-rich region, so people can easily use iron to make chisels and hammers to excavate these caves, right? Well, can such hand tools make the same markings? Let's see how chisels work and what kind of marks they create. Here is a video filmed in the Sichuan Basin where the cave dwellings are located. It shows an experienced stonemason working with a chisel and hammer. We can see that even for a seasoned mason, it's very difficult to create markings or striations on stone that are parallel to each other within close proximity. Plus, certain areas of the caves show big horizontal markings, even though it's not natural for humans to use chisels to carve long horizontal marks or to swing pickaxes horizontally to excavate a stone. Here are some more videos of stone masons working with chisels. I want to remind you that the Weiwen mountain range is mostly purple sandstone. Sandstone is considered a relatively hard stone with a hardness rating between 6 and 7 on the Mohs scale, almost the same hardness of granite and steel. This means even with steel hammers and chisels, it will still be very difficult and arduous to carve sandstone by hand, not to mention creating these rather uniform striations. Also, the harder the stone is, the more difficult it will be to make a long, smooth, uniform, and parallel markings like the ones we see inside the cave dwellings. On another note, if these stone caves were indeed excavated by hand tools over 800 years ago as a hideout or retreat, I don't see the necessity to dress the caves with nice uniform markings, do you? Why spend all this time, energy, and labor to do so? There is no reason for masons to exert themselves to create these finely aligned, almost delicate striations, which cover the entire cave interiors from floors to ceilings. The stone mason footages I showed you exhibit the difficulty of working stone with hand tools, especially to excavate long, smooth, and parallel lines. It makes no sense to cover the whole cave with neatly done marks for decorative purposes. Therefore, I think these markings are excavation marks. This means the cave creators had much better tools, thus excavating these markings was not as strenuous as we think. Some might have seen videos of Mr. Tiger creating a stone cave house with jackhammers and diamond core drills. Let's see what kind of markings these modern tools make. Mr. Tiger is in the construction business, and he decided to make a stone cave behind his family house at the bottom of a hill. He filmed his working process and posted videos online. He gained over a million subscribers. Here is a fun fact. Mr. Tiger and his cave house are from the same city, Neijiang, where the ancient cave dwellings are located. I wonder whether he was inspired with the stone cave idea from the nearby ancient sites with their excavation markings. Mr. Tiger spent about two years, not full time, to create a small stone cave dwelling. It's very impressive work since he did so single-handedly. The first floor is about 2.3 meters or 7.5 feet tall and covers an area a little over 10 square meters 
were 120 square feet. The second floor, which is still under construction, is about 4.5 square meters, less than 50 square feet. Now, diamond core drills and jackhammers are significantly more powerful than chisels and hammers. For example. A regular jackhammer generates 1,100 to 1,800 blows per minute. If a chisel and hammer using mason can make a blow every second constantly, that's only three to five percent of the impacts of a jackhammer. On top of that, jackhammers can offer much greater and consistent impact forces with each blow. That being said, the power tools that Mr. Tiger used. Have given him a revolutionary advantage over the hand tools. Nevertheless, it took Mr. Tiger two years to create a sandstone cave that is 15 square meters or 170 square feet, with the help of modern power tools. In comparison, the big ancient cave in Weiyuan is 67 times bigger. If this big cave was excavated by hand tools as a hiding place in ancient time, then how many laborers and how much time would it take to accomplish that feat? Would it still serve the purpose as a secret hideout if the construction took an extended period of time and it required a big crew of people to work on site? We can see that with a jackhammer, Mr. Tiger is able to cut through stone fairly easily. And make long, continuous, and smooth striations. It almost looked like that he was painting the striations. In some areas, these jackhammer marks resemble the markings inside the ancient caves. However, when we compare the final product of his modern stone cave with the ancient ones, the ancient dwelling are not only much bigger and taller, more sophisticated. But also located on a much higher altitude in Mid Hill, which means the workers would need to climb up to the work sites with their tools, all of which make it more difficult. Besides, we can see even though Mr. Tiger did a great job trying to make markings more evenly spaced, his markings are not nearly as tidy, uniformed, or consistent as the ones at the Weiyuan Caves. Even with power tools. Mr. Tiger couldn't dress his cave with tool marks with the same precision level. Then how did these cliffside ancient caves get excavated in the first place? Today, when we start a construction project, we always want to use the most efficient and productive method. Judging by the well excavated caves in the Weiyuan Mountain Range, it's sensible to assume that these cave creators were highly intelligent and might have utilized sophisticated tools. If chisels and handheld jackhammers are not fit to create these cave markings, then what kind of tools were used to excavate these mysterious caves? Now I'm going to show you the tool marks made by modern hard rock excavators. These strong machines have high cutting power to crush stone. Rock cutting excavators and attachments. Come in a large range of selections adaptable to different job sites and ground conditions, such as trenching, tunneling, quarrying, excavating, demolition, foundation drilling, and more. There are various sizes of rotary drum cutters, which can be mounted on diverse machines. For example, some can be attached to a large machine for excavating work. Some can be mounted on a small demolition robot. These machine arms can go up and down and sideways. They can also produce markings that change directions, similar to what we see at the Weiyuan Caves. Look at the marks they leave on the rocks. They are consistent, uniformed, and usually in layers. These types of layered parallel markings produced from modern machines share similar traits with other ancient sites around the world. In both uniformity and the scale of construction, we can see them at the Weiyuan Caves, at the Basra Caves in Turkey, at the Gabal El Sisla Quarry in Egypt, and many more locations. The tool marks found in these ancient sites are astonishing in their resemblance to the marks created by modern machines. Okay. I think I have presented sufficient evidence showing why the precision marks on many ancient megalithic sites 
were not created by chisels or pickaxes. Even handheld power tools like jackhammers cannot achieve the same level of work quality and consistency. Judging by the various markings at the Weiyuan Caves, it's possible that some smaller areas were dressed with tools like jackhammers, but they are not fit or practical to excavate the big chambers. Furthermore, a civilization which possessed technology for jackhammers is likely to have big machinery as well. Also, there is no viable reason to dress the stone with these clean, neat, and uniform markings. Either inside the caves or on the leftover surfaces of ancient stone quarries, which would just create extra unnecessary work. So why do we see such distinct markings at these megalithic sites? I think these markings were not created to be decorative, but were the result of the excavation process. They probably came from a rock excavation method in a manner similar to today's modern machinery. Considering the tool marks cover small details like window sills and door frames, and the caves are in mid hill, it's conceivable that compact, flexible, and adaptable machinery was utilized during the excavation. But modern machines were only developed less than 200 years ago. How could these ancient sites show machine marks? Did there exist an unknown, highly advanced prehistoric civilization? With their own versions of hard rock machinery, what do you think? If you have any insights, please leave me a comment. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell button so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. If you want to support me, my Patreon link is below. I have a wide range of topics that I want to share with you. This is Curious Being. I'm Tina. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.